right. Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right. Who's having a good time at WordCamp Asia? Oh, come on. Come on. Who's having a good time at WordCamp Asia? Yes. Thank you. And that's fantastic because in addition to these big flagship events, we have, last I checked, uh, 784 local WordPress communities across 115 countries. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> And it's each of these uh, local communities that have the potential to go on to organize work camps and work together to create regional work camps and come together to create events like these. Who here knows about their local WordPress community? Show of hands. All right. For those of you watching from home, that was about like 50% of the crowd here, um, and that's fantastic because anyone who is enthusiastic about WordPress can get involved in their local community or, if there isn't one already, start their own. And if that sounds really exciting but also kind of scary to you, I get it. Uh, this is a fantastic community, and with that comes great responsibility. And so we've gathered this panel here today because every one of our panelists has at one point or another built their WordPress community. And so let's get to meet them. If you'll join me on stage. Oh, we're, we're getting mic'd up. Fantastic. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, I'm going to ask you all to introduce yourselves, if you don't mind. We'll just go down the line here, and if you can share your name, your company, uh, where you call home, and one unique thing about your local WordPress community. Yeah, um, my name is Amit. I'm from uh, Nepal. So I would say I'm from WordPress Nepal. So um, one good thing about the WordPress Nepal is uh, we've organized like 16 work camps so yes. far. That's, that's the really important. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Miriam Schwab. Uh, I'm from Israel. I uh, have been in the WordPress uh, industry for a long time, about 15 years. I founded an agency. Then I founded a company called Stratic. Um, which was recently acquired by Elementor. So now I work at Elementor. I'm head of WordPress relations there now. This is a new role for me. Um, I love being part of the community locally, and I think it also gives me an opportunity to be part of the community globally. And I'm just really, really excited to be here. So thank you. Hi, my name is Megane. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I want to read my script, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm running a WordPress community agency, a WordPress agency, MGN. We are sponsoring WordCamp Asia as theme park. I am previous WordCamp Tokyo organizer, and I also participate as a volunteer staff and speaker. Can I make sense? <laughs> like this? Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, in Japan, WAPU was born in Japan, and almost meet up groups, and almost every word camps have each origin WAPU. Uh, my country have a lot of WAPU's country. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about joining. Thanks for having me. Uh, hi, my name is Asif. Uh, <laughs> and I see a lot of my team members. <laughs> I am from Bangladesh. Uh, this time we are actually over, I think, like close to 250 or 300 people from Bangladesh attending, and all of them needed a visa to come here. So oh. they put a lot of energy. And when we are talking about community, that's the kind of ecosystem we are actually building. I am uh, with WordPress since uh, 2004. Uh, I I'm a core contributor. Uh, I, I'm also a work camp organizer and uh, trying to help as much as possible. And my company, WP Developer, uh, that I co-founded, uh, work uh, exclusively for WordPress. We have several plugins and solutions for WordPress. Thank you. Namaskar, everyone. 
my name is Rahul and I'm from Kolkata. I'm one of the organizers from WordCamp Kolkata. Professionally, I'm a content marketer and very humble and like happy to be here. Thank you, everyone. All right. Well, let's get started. I'm really excited to be here with all of you today. Um, and we talked about uh, something unique about our communities. And uh, Miriam, if you don't mind, I'd like to start with you. What is something unique in your community that has either helped to propel community growth or has been a challenge for it? So I would say that the Israeli WordPress community um, is pretty evenly divided between uh, very hardcore developers, people who are technologists, and they do not, do not want to hear content or learn anything about marketing or <laughs> SEO or that's so not in their wheelhouse. They just want to know about the latest innovations in terms of how you can develop and deploy WordPress websites. Um, and that's always exciting, and I think it keeps a high level of content in our community. And then there are the people, um, I, I guess I would say an equal amount, um, of people who are interested in uh, using WordPress as a marketing tool. And then you have a lot of those within companies who are using WordPress, um, and you have the technologists and the content creators and the marketers who are working together to use that WordPress site to achieve business goals. And those are the types of people who uh, were attending our meetups and our WordCamps. COVID, of course, did not help with that, but we're really hoping to reinvigorate because it's a very interesting and colorful community, and I think we can learn a lot from each other if we can get together again, which we hopefully will. Fantastic. And yeah, we do have a lot to learn from each other. Um, I know you all travel to a number of meetups and WordCamps. Uh, what has beyond the things that make our communities unique, what have you observed that brings us together? Anyone like to start? So you mean, you mean this for this conference? This conference, meetups and WordCamps around the world, what's, what brings us together? Uh, I think, I think in, in the case of uh, Nepal or Nepalese, let's say, uh, I cannot say in general for other communities, uh, the life has changed because of the WordPress for the Nepalese uh, as a whole who are into WordPress because uh, Nepal has this, uh, people still don't know Nepal that we are also into tech. People know Nepal for different reasons, for tourism, for other factors. But because of the tech, uh, because of the WordPress, uh, we've been able to identify ourselves, our talent throughout the world that, okay, we are also key people on many things because if you see the WordPress theme uh, directed, there are 30% of the contribution from Nepal. So because of those life-changing moments, because of the, those uh, impact that WordPress has given, we all feel like giving back to community and that's why we are attending WordPress not just in Asia, we also have participants uh, in Bangladesh. We also uh, attend WordCamp, WordCamp in US. So, yeah. so that's like giving back to community. Fantastic. Yeah, and it can be life-changing. Um, in fact, I'd love to hear a few uh, stories of your first experience with, uh, with WordPress events. I think, Megan, a, you and I were just talking about uh, your first experience. What was that like? Oh, I, I understand your English. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my first WordCamp, WordPress event was WordCamp Tokyo 2008. I have joined WordCamp held near Tokyo or in Japanese every year. Yeah. Uh, one quote inspired me then, uh, first time. Uh, I remember vividly the quote that was used in speech standing on the shoulder of giant. Uh, it means giant equal WordPress, right? Uh, this quote opened a new chapter for me. Uh, that meaning is we can use the power of giant and we can spread the power of giant. Uh, that's so great and it inspired me. Then I started WordPress blog community called WPD in 2012 when I became freelancer. And I be a CEO, and we start at after a company. Then I want to learn to from others in the community, and also wanted to help others by writing in WordPress blogs and webs. Yeah, the really finished 
updating, but our connection is, and heartful friendship con continue today like this. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. And I think everyone who comes to this community, they have such a different experience. And I think, uh, Asif, you also had a really like, interesting uh, first time in this community. What was that like? Uh, so for me, uh, the first time I attended a art camp, it was in Australia. So, and it was also for, uh, for the first time I was traveling out of my own continent. And in Australia, like no disrespect, respect or anything, like the way they speak is very hard sometimes for us to actually adopt the accent. So, and I was one of the speaker and it was before like uh, 2010 or something. So uh, when I was asked to speak, I was speaking so fast and I completed my uh, lightning talk in five minutes. Then I realized nobody understood anything. I oh, spoke no. too fast. Then I completely resumed the whole session again. Uh, but you know, like something very strange happened on the very first experience for me in the WordCamp. I fall in love with WordCamp. And that changed my life. Like uh, I have attended like over 100 WordCamps so far. And only one actually happened in my country. So breast hundreds of WordCamp is all through the world. And so uh, for, for a lot of us, uh, the community people or the people who love WordPress, a lot of things are not directly rational to the financial aspect of life and everything. For me, it's kind of a joy that I find with people. For, I would call like WordPress and WordCamp people are my people. And a lot of my friends, my best friend, are actually made from WordPress community or the WordCamps. And you see, like, WordPress have developed so much. Now we see a lot of companies uh, investing a lot in WordCamp, WordPress. And uh, we have a lot of different programs, like 545 or a lot of different things. But I feel like if you could give someone the joy of WordPress, the joy of the community, he will actually do a lot of contributions by their own. You can't actually pay someone and ask, like, you have to contribute. If you could actually uh, make them understand the joy of WordPress and the open source community, then probably it's easier to develop the community. And uh, this is actually the, an, an example, like WordCamp Asia is probably one of the finest community events because we gather around from all around the world. Like, I think we have uh, more people uh, from our local community in uh, <laughs> Thailand than we have from all around the world this time, right? Yeah. So th this is a really special event, and uh, I would like to thank everyone who actually traveled, took the time, uh, took all the energy to actually attend and express the same kind of energy for all of us. Yeah. It's uh, that sense of belonging is so important. And uh, I think our community does a really wonderful job of trying to lower the barriers to participate and to make it as diverse and inclusive as possible because that diversity does make us much stronger as a whole. And Roel, I believe you've, uh, you've done some diversity work in your community. Um, what does that look like? Uh, for us, uh, diversity and inclusivity was always a priority. And uh, although we are named as Kolkata WordPress community, but it's just in the name, we believe that it is for everyone, not just for the local people. So I just want to share the experience that I have in last WordCamp that happened just very recently on December. We have audience from Bangladesh, Nepal, and uh, we have uh, speakers from Europe, US. And every time we do a WordCamp, we get huge support from all our neighboring countries. And we we all represent Kolkata. And Kolkata, if you go with the history of Kolkata, like people of all across uh, you know, the subcontinent, they came and settled down. So we try to follow the same philosophy and try to make it comfortable and inclusive so that anyone from anywhere can come and join and be a part of WordPress Kolkata community. And I think that what makes uh, WordCamp Kolkata also unique that 
we are local, but not local. Everyone is there. And slowly, we are trying our best to build up the community uh, much more in terms of number and also much more in terms of inclusivity. One priority that we have right now to balance the gender ratio, which I think is a common challenge between all the you know, Indian subcontinent work camps and meetups. So that's something where we are working on. And also we are working on to increase and welcome more students because today or tomorrow, we will be too old to you know, represent. So we need young people to come up and step up and take the responsibilities. So for, uh, as a community, our two goals are to balance the gender ratio and to include more youngsters on the group. Fantastic. All right. Well, and our hope here today is to inspire you to, to get involved with your local community. And so I do want to make sure that we have time for some questions. Um, if uh, I believe somebody has mics out in the audience, um, if uh, right over here, if you have questions, could you just uh, raise your hand or wave or something and we'll run the mic over to you um, while you are getting while that is happening and we're getting questions ready um, i'd love to know um, one thing that i love about this part of the world is that there are so many languages um, however that does make it really tricky for us to communicate with each other has this shown up in your communities, and how do you how do you work across all those different languages? So, um, in the case of Nepal, uh, even the Nip Nepal itself has like 92 languages. Just, just, just it's just one contrast that many languages, but this is one common language that we all understand that is Nepali. So, what we uh, try to balance is. Whenever we do our meetups, we try to conduct um, in Nepali language because it's very com comfortable for all the you know, audience as well as the speakers. But when we do our work camps, so we have participants from other countries as well as a speaker as well as a participant. So in the work camp, we try to include English. So that's how we uh, balance like uh, in terms of the knowledge sharing. So whoever are comfortable with uh, speaking in Nepali, they are more like a speakers in uh, meetups. And for the people who are more comfortable with the international languages, they, we, we invite them as speakers in the uh, work camps. So that's how we balance. At the same time, we don't really just, uh, depending on that accent or something, we make sure that we go, give equal opportunity for all the speakers and all the person. Yeah. Nice. Anyone else? Um, so at the but the Israeli word camps, we would generally have guests that would come overseas, from overseas as well. And so, well, on the one hand, the local community preferred content in Hebrew, which, by the way, I was often surprised about because um, Israel is quite a tech-oriented uh, country and uh, quite international, and people generally know English well. Still, the local community wanted content in Hebrew, which is legitimate. But we would want the international guests to feel comfortable as well and know what's going on. So first of all, we'd make sure to translate all of the content. The website, we would translate into English as well, and the schedule and the program. And then what we also tried to do was that uh, we would have two or three um, tracks happening at the same time, and that at any given time, at least one session was happening in English, so that the international guests would feel comfortable being able to attend sessions as well, and they wouldn't have to feel left out. And then often, they would be the ones giving the sessions. And so that way, uh, we had content that the local community felt comfortable with, our international guests would uh, be able to attend or speak at, and then also it meant that there was content going up onto WordPress TV that, uh, from Israel that people could understand as well. Although I remember when we started uploading the content in Hebrew, um, I think it was Andrea Middleton, she was very excited that for the first time WordPress TV was getting Hebrew content. Yeah. So I was excited that we were able to contribute that as well. Fantastic. All right, uh, do we have questions from the audience? I see one over there. Thank you. Uh, thanks all for this discussion. Uh, so my question is, uh, 
considering that the, assuming that the community in your uh, country is very small, that it's invisible, uh, and uh, there are no groups on Facebook to meet with the uh, people uh, with interest in WordPress, how to go about starting a new community within your country? Great question. How do we start a community in your country? Yeah, uh, I, I will try. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to question, today you coming here alone, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, at first of all, my script uh, reading in. <laughs> Uh, at first, please check your uh, neighborhood, communities, local team, or something. But actually, I heard from you, I, you don't have near neighborhood community, right? Okay, I see, got it. Uh, the huge and difficult, complicated <laughs> question. But you are brave, is now we can understand. And maybe everyone can help you <laughs> and we think with you for think for you uh, improve your country's community yeah at first please i think uh, better is uh, yeah you want to you want to more ask question to in uh, in our slack what slack yeah right yeah what slack is best way to ask to around of something question do, do you have ca account at Word Slack? Sorry? Uh, Word Slack account. It is an official Word Slack group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, go ahead. Right. WordPress Slack. Yeah, WordPress Slack. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Community yeah. channel. Yeah. Uh, let's try to join and come, please keep conversation in Slack. Okay, Don't okay, of so? course. Can I DM you on Slack? Yeah. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Let's try it. Is it okay? <laughs> Do you have another idea about it? Uh, so, like, uh, if it's about, like, a smaller local community and how they could develop, uh, uh, you see, like, what happens, even for Bangladesh, uh, we are mainly based in Dhaka, our capital. And in Dhaka, it's easier to do everything because we have people, we have a lot of university, we have companies to support, sponsor. But let's talk about the whole country. Uh, I'm, I'm actually very impressed about the Nepalese communities. Nepal is a very distributed country and mountainous, but they have grown uh, WordPress community to different parts of Nepal. And uh, the, the core organizer, the, the uh, people who are actually pushing WordPress throughout the country, they actually help each other. So like if they are organizing like WordCamp Nepal, the nationwide event, they do it like in different cities every year. And I'm sure like uh, they follow a lot of like uh, things like uh, how to actually have like more speaker, how to have like more support. What we are trying to do in Bangladesh right now, uh, in Bangladesh we have uh, a mountainous uh, city called Silet. And they started WordPress community about like one or two years ago. And now they are organizing meetups very regularly. So when they organize meetup, in our uh, meetup is uh, a little bit more driven towards like session or like networking. So sometimes they invite people uh, from Dhaka community. And we are seeing this trend all through the country. Like a, in a small city, if they are organizing a meetup, they will invite everyone from the country. And it actually helps uh, each other to actually uh, expose the community to even larger audience. And uh, just recently, uh, even Silet got approved for their own Watt camps. So in Bangladesh, the first Watt camp we are going to see in this year will be like Watt camp Silet. And I feel like uh, this is a very proud moment how a smaller city could grow with the help of like the uh, rest of the country. Um, all right, next question. All right, I see, I see a hand over here. I can't quite see out into the audience, so you might need to really wave. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for coming to Thailand and welcome to Bangkok. So uh, my question is that, um, as you can see that this event is happening in Thailand, but uh, in Thailand we also have like a WordPress community, but 
what I see here is not a lot of Thai people coming to this event, which is like one of the biggest for WordPress. So um, how, how can I contribute or we in terms of Thai people that is already existing community, but not that big and it's not that popular? How, how can we improve this community to be a little bit more for, for the local people uh, in Thailand and make, even though a lot of uh, businesses and agency here use WordPress to do their own business and uh, yeah, and, and gain momentum in terms of uh, businesses. So, so the, the question is that how we can build a better and a bigger community and you know, more unified in, in, in Thailand. Right. So uh, it's actually like a very good question. And the main reason why maybe we do not see a lot of Thai people is about the, uh, the community activations. And also we do that WordCamp Asia was very overhyped throughout the community in WordPress ecosystem. So whenever they release the ticket, it run out very soon. So if the Thai community is not very engaged and well informed about what's going on globally, they maybe even did not actually got a chance to buy the ticket because ticket ran out so soon. And uh, I actually even attended like few tech events in Bangkok and I was amazed to see how bigger the tech ecosystem uh, we have in here. Like uh, they have a lot of software companies, they have a lot of companies uh, influenced by uh, Japanese or uh, neighborhood countries and uh, this is a good community. Maybe if we could engage more young people, if we could go uh, close to the university and tech institute you have in Bangkok or Thailand or other parts of Bangkok, uh, Thailand, then maybe it will be easier to get more people into it. And uh, you know, like in a lot of other countries, when they started to have even meetups, sometimes they shared it in uh, like a global Slack or other, peop uh, other places. So if somebody is like traveling to Bangkok, maybe not from this, uh, this town, but maybe uh, traveling from Japan, because I, I see uh, Japan has a lot of business and other things in Thailand. So that, that's how probably you could get started with. And I do feel like this particular WordCam, the WordCam Asia, will actually accelerate all the WordPress-related growth in th throughout the Thailand. So you will probably see a lot of uh, things are happening. And maybe, uh, maybe uh, attendees like you will actually take some initiatives and start gathering like, people around and have like, more meetups and other things. Oh. I'll add a quick uh, bit of uh, facts in there because we've referred to the Slack channel a few times. If uh, you don't know what that is, that's okay. Um, there is a, a Slack instance where all of the contributors build WordPress together. It's called the Making WordPress Slack instance. And uh, within that, there's a channel for every single team and the community team has a channel there that uh, supports meetup organizers around the world. Um, and in fact, do we have any community deputies in here? You can just wave your hand real fast. I see Hari. All right. Uh, and one over there too. I can't quite see who you are though. Um, but these are also the people who can help you get started and answer questions about uh, meetups globally as well. So they are additional resources to you. Um, Sorry, I interrupted you. Go for it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just, just like uh, regarding the uh, expanding a community in Bangkok, so just wanted to share our experience because in the case of Nepal, um, it started with three people actually in 2007, which expanded to now more than 1,000 or let's say in, a, in our work camp, we get more than 1,000 people. So the idea is to, co to continue even if there are few people joining a meetup. So that is very important. That's something that Nepal has done right. Let's say even I didn't, I was not a part of WordCamp or, or Word, WordPress meetups in 2007. We were pretty, pretty like we were students. But it was, the WordCamp were happening every year, like they did not give up. And WordCamp was one of the major push because we uh, went there and learned the stories about the people 
that WordPress is doing something better for them. So because of these stories, that more people started joining these meetups and camps. So today, like because 16 WordCamp is the reason why we've been able to expand. So my suggestion would be to not give up, even if it's the three people or five people. Make sure that you continue your meetup, and that that will eventually let you to expand your uh, WordPress community for sure. Thanks. Fantastic. All right. Any other questions? Hello. See, maybe maybe one over there. Oh, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Hello. So uh, I just want to reemphasize uh, what uh, he was saying. I'm from WordPress community Islamabad. Uh, in Pakistan. So we started in 2016 and uh, that was the initiative that we took to make a community in Pakistan. So there were only two, three people joining in a community. So we, the main, main goal is like even if you see there are no many, no as such people joining in a community, we did not give up. We, there was, there was initial meetup where we have only four people coming in a in a meetup, five people coming in a meetup, but the main goal was to not give up, and at the end we have, we conducted uh, two world camps there, and uh, now we have almost more than 60, 70 people joining in our meetup every month. Amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Um, can I just share something about how we yeah, grew our please. community? So, um, when we so I actually didn't start the community in Israel. It was someone else. He just picked it up and he organized two word camps. And they were quite small. Uh, he did it in Tel Aviv. And then uh, he was like, okay, that's enough for me. Because <laughs> uh, organizing word camps is definitely uh, challenging. And I was like, okay, maybe I should try. And at the time, there was less of a push for meetups. So we weren't uh, organizing like ongoing meetups. So I was like, okay, let's try to do a word camp. And um, it wasn't big, but uh, it started, I think, just having these events and, and organizing them and getting people to start being aware of it. Like you were saying, start with a few. Those people tell other people. And those types of activities is what ends up growing your community locally because it's also motivating for those people who are showing up. They're learning from each other. They can collaborate with each other. Um, and then they feel part of something bigger. That first WordCamp that I organized, I, uh, I was like, I want Matt to come. <laughs> so I emailed him, <laughs> and he came. And, uh, these days, I don't think Matt can go all over the world. But um, one way, I, I felt like that strengthened our local community because uh, having people come from outside of the local community shows that we're connected, not just like where we are, but also around the world, which is one of the wonderful things about WordPress that we're all connected to each other regardless of where we are. And it starts almost like with the, the, like the grain that you plant, the seed that you plant in your local community, and then that helps you connect and grow to the other communities. So by kind of cross-pollinating, I guess I would say, having people come from outside, it like gives like a invigorating type of uh, just new faith, new approach to your local community. And then also, all of you who are here, and I know it's hard to go to international word camps, believe me, I would watch from Israel while the word camps would happen in the US, the main ones, and I could never go. It was too far, and I had babies, many babies. <laughs> I was, could not travel that far, but then when word camp happened in Europe, it was closer, and it was the first time that I could actually go and connect with all these people that I was like huge fans of online, and I got to meet them in real life which also helps bring back a kind of uh, invigoration to your local community. Um, the other nice thing about our community is that the people who we're big fans of are very approachable. You can just become friends with them. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> and, uh, and then that led to like, this kind of you know, continuous relationship between our local community and the international community. And I started speaking at more international events, which brought more awareness about our community and uh, so, so just it's about taking the first step and making connections internally, but also outside of your country that can help you learn things that you can bring to your local community. Um, and also it helps motivate in your own local community in terms of feeling connected like on a larger scale, which is, I think, very motivating. Wonderful. All right, any other questions? Oh, oh right over there. Yeah. 
Uh, hello, my name is Ade. I'm from Indonesia. So actually, I share the same feeling as the guy from Thailand. Yeah, like Indonesia is one of the most populated countries in Southeast Asia. But then uh, there are only few of us uh, who attended the uh, work in Asia. Um, and I'm very proud that some of the countries like uh, Bangladesh managed to bring such a huge crowd to the work in Asia. And yeah. <laughs> so the question is, um, in, in Indonesia, the workers community is not something new for us, but then uh, we have plenty of uh, theme creator, plugin creators, uh, but uh, unfortunately, like um, not many of them is actually kind of involved in the community activities. Yeah, like um, considering the low left, uh, low numbers of uh, local meetups that's happening, and there was just like only one WordCamp happens last year. It was a really good start. Uh, so I would like to know. I'm, I'm curious to know like um, what happens in each of your countries probably that was kind of the defining moment, or how could you create such a consistent and persistent community, uh, WordPress community growth in, in, in your country. So if you could just share some, uh, there could be some, like one moment or tips that how you can uh, get this consistent uh, growth or momentum in, in the WordPress community in your country. Thank you. I love that question. What was the defining moment that... Uh, I could take the questions. So uh, in Bangladesh, the WordPress exists uh, for a longer time. Uh, my company is doing re works, work related to WordPress for a longer time. But our community jump started back in 2013, the time we started doing meetups. And uh, like it's just my uh, experience, sometimes those kind of development is driven by leadership. So if you have people who are dedicated, who are connected, and at the same time have the capacity to drive or gather people, it actually helps uh, each other. And uh, as I said, like, I'm very much motivated from the Nepali community at the beginning. Like, they started even uh, earlier than us. They had really good work camps even before than us. And in Nepal, they actually uh, they are also driven by a few of the leaders, but they organize a lot of things very differently than we used to see in other uh, places in the world. Like they used to, I heard they used to organize like workshop uh, for younger people so they could get into theme development or those kind of things. And that actually helps to draw a larger audience. In Bangladesh, it also happened in the same way. We started to organize meetups. Uh, a lot of people got interested. A lot of young people who are probably uh, doing some work in PHP or wants to get into design or website or the website building kind of works. They started to attain what camps to listen and to network. And that's how it jump started. Like we even have a meetup that has close to 1,000 people, just a meetup but it's still like close to 1,000 people. Most of our meetups still right now are like close to 70 or 100 people. So uh, th those kind of meetups could actually influence a lot of people. And last three years was very hard for all of us. Like uh, we did not have not only what camps, like what uh, what camp Asia was supposed to happen in 2020. Uh, I'm very thankful for all the organizers who are keep working for nearly like four years. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a very special thanks for all the organizers who are doing it for longer years. And uh, if you think about like how we are not able to organize meetup for a few years, it actually caused some of the damage. And uh, right now, as we are able to meet physically, as we are allowed to have meetups and what camps, this larger event, I think it will change a lot of things. And I even personally actually attended one what camp in uh, Jakarta, and it was a very good experience. And in the same year, uh, Indonesia had, I think, like three what camps in a single year. So Indonesia has a re really good potentials. I think like as soon as we start to have the meetups again, I, we will see like more of the uh, communities actually coming apart and coming together. Yeah, and as I just I, w I want to be honest about our meetups, and we have struggled with consistency. It's really hard. Um, it was hard to get people to show up 
And we were doing them in Jerusalem, which is a much smaller and less active community, but I was like, this is where we are, we're gonna make it work. It was much harder. I recommend doing things that make your life easier. So for example, if when we restart the meetups, we'll probably be in the Tel Aviv area where there's just more action. And I know that's not relevant for everyone, but um, I actually was talking to someone here who uh, said something interesting, which was that they moved their meetups from the evening to the morning, like from uh, to 10 a.m. And I was like, and, he, and their attendance grew. Like, that's really smart, because evenings can be hard for people with families, the end of the workday, you're tired, you're gonna start driving around, like, who has the strength? I, I know I barely have the strength to do that kind of thing. <laughs> so you're like, okay, well, especially if people are working in this field, then it's, you know, work-related. A 10 a.m. meetup makes a lot of sense, and people still have energy to do a thing like that. So. Uh, something that I'm taking from, from that conversation and I'm, I'm recommending in general is to try different approaches. Try different frequencies. So some communities more frequent works better, some less. Uh, the time, the day even. And um, if you can, bring like a local celebrity type of person, like someone that people know and are excited to hear from and like push that with all your strength to get people to come to that meetup, and then they'll be like, oh, that's a cool group of people. Hopefully, I, like, they will stay engaged going forward. So basically test, A-B testing almost for your meetup. Uh, I want more. Uh, uh, I want to say other side. Uh, yeah, we want to improve, we want to enjoy all together and improve the number of uh, people. Yeah, but uh, I think, uh, I want to say, don't be rash. Uh, yeah, this is the most and best Asia community event. Uh, then, uh, I think I'll find your pace and keep it in order to continue contributing. Uh, this is, uh, I think uh, it's a key, another key point, right? Yeah, yeah uh, Japanese culture, uh, like these consist his consistent work. Consistent. Yeah, uh, it's like uh, in Japanese, it's shokunin. Uh, that means it's craftsmanship. Yeah, uh, make it routines and uh, participate regularly. Uh, for example, uh, document team reps uh, Akira san, Akira Tachibana san, document team rep, uh, open translate hour every Friday night in Japan Slack. Yeah, it's a good experience and example for joining regularly. It's keep in touch easier and easy to connecting any your local people team. Wonderful. Yeah, that connection is really important. Raul, I yeah, I'm so glad you're going to jump in here because India has such a vibrant community, and we talked about wanting a WordCamp India earlier today. I'd love to hear from you as well. Yeah, thank you. So what I think, uh, in order to grow any community, consistency is important. And uh, we also need to think, like, I believe you're an organizer, so you need to think what is in it for the audience. Like, if they come to your meetup, what are they taking back with them? It can be some knowledge, it can be some value, it can be good networking, or it can just be in a couple of hours of, you know, healthy, good conversation. So whenever we uh, plan a meetup, we try to, you know, uh, ask ourselves, like, if I am an attendant, uh, attendee and I want to, uh, you know, be a part of the meetup or attend that particular meetup, what will I gain from there? So if we can provide a value and if uh, people, like, get something, it, it, it does not have to be, you know, you need to bring world-class speakers. You don't need to do that. You can pick, uh, you know, people who are doing good job. Uh, if, if someone, for example, someone is running a startup, just, you know, approach them, ask them, invite them. Uh, just, you know, outreach. As a, a community organizer, it is very important to communicate, outreach, and connect with people, invite them, and make it a safe place for them. You don't have to be the best speaker. You don't have to be, you know, the most knowledgeable person. But you need to be approachable. You need to be a good human being first. And you will see automatically the things get connected. Just be consistent and try to provide a value. And I think that's the only thing that will help you to, you know, grow the community. And 
try to network with all the neighboring uh, communities within your country and also outside. Try to plan meetups uh, when you see you know, other uh, community members are coming to your city. It helps because uh, first and foremost, you get a good speaker. Uh, and, first and, and on the other hand, you have a scope of uh, collaborating within the communities. So I would, again, uh, like to quote uh, uh, from what I learned from uh, Nepal community. So every time I go to Nepal for any of the work camps, I learn something from there. And I bring it back home and try to implement that. So if you really want to grow your community, you also need to uh, you know, attend and you know, visit and see what other communities are doing. Try to learn from them. And if you see something good, just you know, bring it on and implement. So yeah. I think that's the three things that needs to be done is create value, be consistent, be open, invite. Like You should always have an inviting attitude. And that's it. I think right. this thing will help you. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. And we have so much to learn from each other, um, but unfortunately, we are at the end of our time here. However, all the panelists will be around and available in case you have any other questions, um, as will the community deputies as well. Thank you all so much for being here today. I hope you are all very inspired to start your local community. Thank you. Thank you.